Hi, I'm Bill Lynn. I'm the Vice President of Heritage Arsenal. And we really took a departure uh, with this uh, example of a Prussian officer's helmet from 1871 that walked in. We had a military family who had purchased this in Germany as a souvenir. Um, uh, it was a decorative piece. They uh, really enjoyed it in their home. Unfortunately, when they moved from Germany to the United States, this was improperly packed, got crushed down to so this leather helmet got crushed down, and they came to Heritage Arsenal to say, you know, given our extensive network, what could we do, what could we advise? So uh, we uh, have this opportunity to uh, tap into our network and actually bring this helmet uh, back to an original state. So let's uh, talk about the helmet at first here. So this is an 1871 Prussian officer's helmet uh, called a pickle haube or a spiked bonnet, uh, as the translation suggests. And uh, again, we have all of this damage, but let's talk about what's actually here. So we have the Wappen in front, which is a crest. Uh, all the German states would have had their own. This is the Prussian Eagle. You have these chin scales here. You have the spike itself, which lends uh, to the name. You have a front and rear visor. This whole body is in leather. Um, so this is actually sewn to the main body and sewn to the main body. And then you have this spine and back. The chin scales, uh, which are uh, not only practical from a chin strap standpoint, but decorative. Um, also fix these cockades in place. So the cockade on the right hand side would have been the national colors, the tricolor of Germany. But because it was a collection of German states, the left cockade actually signifies the state in which it's, uh, uh, its state of origin. So uh, this happens to be Prussian with the silver and black, but if this was Bavaria, for instance, it would be blue and white. On the inside here, you can see how misshapen this is. Uh, we've got a spike plate, which I believe is incorrect, as well as the screws that hold it. And we're also missing that cloth liner inside, which could have been adjusted to the size of the wearer's head. No uh, name in here or unit um, uh, association here that we can find, uh, but still an interesting helmet from the uh, really the golden age of the Prussian state, and which was the envy of the rest of Europe and the world. And that's why the proliferation of these helmets from the early 1840s, when the Prussians adopted these, and how you see these worn actually around the world up through the, about halfway through World War I. So what we're gonna do is um, send this off to a, a, a partner of ours, who specializes in these and what he's going to have to do is he's going to have to strip all of the insignia off of this helmet. He's going to have to soak or saturate this leather body and put it onto a form that forces it back into shape. And he's going to have to look at the stitching and both the rear and front visor to make sure that these are attached correctly and using the correct thread. You don't want to use synthetic thread in this case. He's going to look at all the uh, insignia and ensure it's correct. He's gonna find a liner inside here that, that uh, is original to this period and, or, and original to a helmet like this. And all of this is gonna be put back into an original configuration. And so uh, we're excited to see video two, uh, what we get back um, after about a month of a pretty specialized work. So we look forward to bringing that to you.